Alexander Povetkin's promoter says that he thinks the WBC investigation into Povetkin's failed drug tests may take a few months to complete. <laughs> That's right, people, a few months. And this is in the opinion, again, of Povetkin's promoter. Now, this whole drug testing saga, let's just briefly go over it in a nutshell. Povetkin tested positive for meldonium. Now, people are saying it was only trace amounts of meldonium and the trace amount that he was caught for was below the acceptable uh, threshold. So it shouldn't have been a failed drug test. That's what people are saying. Well, the issue here is why didn't that trace amount of meldonium show up in Povetkin's previous tests? Because this was, I believe, the third or fourth drug test that he's had this year in the lead up to the Wilder fight. Why weren't those trace elements showing up in the other tests? This is why the WBC, remember it's the WBC who have done this. The WBC looked at that and said, you know what? This shows that there is the possibility of, of some skullduggery going on here. So we're going to pull the plug on this fight and conduct an investigation. Because we, this guy's been tested two or three times and there hasn't been even the tiniest trace element of meldonium. Then on this final test, all of a sudden there's trace elements of meldonium in his system. What's going on? Has this guy been cheating the previous tests? How is it possible that there's tr only trace ele elements of meldonium in his system? Has, he, has his food been contaminated by it? I mean, what the hell's going on? So, as I say, that's why they pulled the plug and it was the right decision by the WBC. They had to pull the plug. They've got VADA testing. WBC now are working with VADA with their, I guess, clean boxing program. That's one of the good things about the WBC. I criticize the WBC a lot. I think they make up rules as they go along in terms of rankings and stuff like that and do a lot of favors for their champions, which don't seem to uh, concur with their own rules. But when it comes to the drug testing, they do seem to be actually quite proactive when it comes to setting up this whole situation with VADA. And also with the mandatory situation, the WBC have started making champions of other uh, organizations mandatory for their title. That's another good thing that WBC have done. And I've noticed that some of the other organizations have started to do that as well. So the WBC did set a good example there. So again, you know, even when it comes to sanctioning bodies, no sanctioning body <laughs> is below praise and no sanctioning body is above criticism. So I do have to give the WBC their props for that. So yeah, will it take two months? I, I mean, we don't like seeing these things drag out. I mean, when you look at Lucas Brown's situation with Ruslan Chagayev, and I do believe Lucas Brown was innocent in my personal opinion. I think he was spiked and set up. Lucas Brown didn't have a history of taking clenbuterol. Povetkin does have a history of taking meldonium. That's another one of the damning things, which obviously the WBC looked at and they said, you know what? We know this guy's used meldonium in the past. He's admitted to it. And now we've found trace elements of meldonium in his system. We got to pull the plug. We got to investigate what the hell's going on here. I hope there is no tomfoolery going on behind the scenes with the WBC and Povetkin's promoter Rabinsky, whereby there's any type of corruption, money exchanged. Let's just keep it hush, hush. Let's get Povetkin back in the ring and get him this shot. Look, I understand from, from Rabinsky's point of view, he's invested a lot of money in trying to put this fight on. And he wants to see at least some of that money come back. He don't want to abandon, abandon this fight at this point. Even though he is a very rich man, again, he's not a, a stupid man. He don't want to abandon the fight. He wants to at least get something, some type of financial return from it. I mean, the fight didn't go ahead, but obviously he's financed a certain amount with the promotion and, you know, what have you, venue hire and all that type of stuff, doing television deals and God knows what else. So I understand things from his perspective. Povetkin is now saying he wonders whether Wilder wanted this fight in the first place. Well, if he didn't want it, he could have vacated rather than sign for the fight and go through with a training camp. He had every opportunity to vacate previously. He didn't, and he was going to go through with it. 
And if it weren't for that trace amount of meldonium in your system, Mr. Povetkin, the fight would have already happened. So, you know, it is what it is. We'll see what happens here, people. But when I'm hearing that the investigation is going to take several months, that does set off alarm bells in my head. And I start thinking, several months? Why? I mean, we're not investigating some serial killer murder here. <laughs> we're just investigating drug testing protocol and how this drug's got in this guy's system. Why would it take several months to investigate? That is just disturbing to me. I want to hear a ruling from the WBC within the next couple of weeks. We're probably not going to get it. <laughs> and that is alarming. But that's what I want to hear. A ruling soon. I don't want to hear no, it's going to take a couple of months for the WBC to make a ruling. And uh, Povetkin, to my knowledge, Povetkin's B sample was positive as well. So as soon as Lucas Brown's B sample came in positive, the WBA stripped him and suspended him immediately. Povetkin's B samples come in, come in positive and the WBC is just sitting there twiddling their thumbs, I guess. Again, it's trace elements of meldonium rather than over the limit uh, amounts, sorry, not elements. Anyway, let me know how you feel about this story, people. It's your boy Hatman, I'm out.